making content is the best way to market your stuff. But all the other isekai characters, I've completely forgotten because they all look the same. Can't tell you guys yet. <laughs> Welcome back to Manga Education, where I answer your questions about the manga, webtoon, and anime industry. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio. I'm a writer-producer in the space, done stuff in novels, video games, webtoons, and now, coming soon, anime. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, uh, let's get right into your questions. This is Chung Moa on Patreon. If you didn't know, Patreon subscribers are prioritized in these question and answers. So check out Patreon link in description. Process to avoid your characters from looking like each other or too similar to each other. So this is a very common thing. I mean, when I think about a lot of isekai main characters, right? Isekai main characters, a lot of them look very similar in terms of character design. When you think of those characters, the only one you're really going to remember is the original, right? Kirito from Sword Art online is like one of the original archetypes for that kind of isekai stuff and so you remember kirito's character design but all the other isekai characters i've completely forgotten <laughs> because they all look the same and so how do you avoid that a lot of it can be just in a design in the hairstyle a lot of it can be in facial structure a lot of it can be in the clothing you don't want every character to have the same hair color the same hairstyle the same clothing i think clothing is actually a really easy way to make your character stand out while having like a generic hairstyle Style, like for example, but also there's certain appearances that have like a main character type of feel. I think the really the key thing is like, how do you make your character memorable? How do you avoid characters from looking like each other? Changing their face, changing their age, changing their gender, changing different aspects of everything that can make them feel like they stand out a lot more to the reader. So if you're doing webtoons or anime, a lot of it can be also in color. You can be changing the colors between different characters so that they look very distinctly different from each other. And if your problem is that too many of your characters look similar because you're an artist, then that is an issue with your current style, right? You have to start trying to draw different types of characters. I would really advise studying different casts of popular anime and manga, or even outside of anime and manga, different popular franchises, how those characters look, feel, and why they feel so iconic. So what about Star Wars? You look at Star Wars characters and you're like, you immediately know how iconic those characters are. When you look at Darth Vader, you don't even think twice, right? You're like, Darth Vader, that's the guy. And then when you see like the toy version of him in Toy Story, you know what they're referencing, right? Because it's such an iconic original design. So thinking about how you can make your designs super original, and iconic like that, where someone will look at it and immediately be like, wow, I, I know exactly who that is. I think that's really key. Damn, I could do a whole video on character design. Next question is by Higana Bana. Double kill. Can you talk a little bit about your influences or inspirations behind the protagonist and setting of your upcoming webtoon, Double Kill? If you can say anything without breaking your NDA. <laughs> influences and inspirations. Double Kill is a new webtoon original that's coming out by me and Umer. Umer and I have been working together since we were teenagers, and now I'm in my mid-20s, he's in his mid-20s, and we finally landed our serialization together. Inspirations. When I came up with the idea, I was really into Inception. So the big inspirations for me, John Wick it meets Inception meets Jujutsu Kaisen and Bleach. So that's how I pitched this thing pretty much. It's like those four series fused into one. And yeah, I'm not going to spoil what this thing is about, but it's... I'm just not going to spoil it. But those are my inspiration. Very heavy on the Bleach and Jujutsu Kaisen inspiration in terms of like execution and how the characters look and how the fighting is and how the power system operates. I would say that the Inception and John Wick stuff is more world building because yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. What aspects of Double Kill are you and Umer excited to share with readers upon release. Tagonist, antagonist, art, action, themes, lore. What I'm really proud about is the concepts of this. The world building is really good. Character designs from Umer's side are so memorable. And again, everyone looks very distinctly different. Maybe we can flash some character designs here to kind of address the previous question on character design. I think the protagonists are super likable. The antagonists are super unlikable. I think there's a lot of really badass scenes and I think it's based in New York City where, I'm, where I live and it's really really cool to be able to bring a lot of that to life in kind of the webtoon space. It's a very artistically intensive project. So is my other series, Angel Wings. So it's definitely been like a learning curve in terms of like, how can you produce something that's so intensive in a serialization or in, in a webtoon format, right? And so that's been a production struggle, but also I'm really excited for people to just see the crazy art, the crazy fights that we have. I think they're some of the most innovative fights that you will see in Shonen action. And I know that's a really big statement, 
it, but like actually, it's freaking crazy. It's crazy. So I'm really excited for you guys to read it. Angel Wings, can you talk a little bit more about the influences, inspirations behind the protagonist and setting of your upcoming webtoons, Angel Wings? Yeah, so Angel Wings is based off of your name meets Death Note meets Dante's Inferno or Purgatorio and his paradise epic poems, right? Angel Wings is a story about like kind of the Christianity, heaven and hell. It's about a devil and angel that decide to switch lives. There's a bunch of stuff that goes into that, but I won't spoil anymore. That's the basic concept. What are we the most excited about? Again, I think Komipa is one of the most talented artists and hardworking artists that I've ever met. He's the art director at my studio. He's also the artist behind Angel Wings. Yeah, he's been a mangaka for like, I don't know, more years than I've been alive, I think. And so he is one of those artists that is so desired in the industry. He's worked in anime, he's worked in manga, he's worked, you know, now he's, he's breaking into webtoons with me. And so I think this is a really great opportunity for him to like reach an audience on something that he has ownership of. And yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to see the characters, see the the world building that we have. It's really big world building again, like Double Kill. I think the concept's really unique. Our take on Dante's Inferno is I think something that's really interesting and has not been done in anime, manga, and webtoons. Because again, it's a very Western type of storyline, but the way that we tackle it is very using Kicho Tenketsu Japanese manga storytelling structure. So really excited for people to get a new kind of story and kind of like the manga anime space. And that entire production of Angel Wings is very similar to what you would find at an anime studio. Like we have specialists for coloring, flatting, background, background coloring. We have specialists to every little part because the art is just so intensive. And again, that is my first project that I'm doing completely in-house at my studio, Inspire Production. Can't wait for you guys to check that one out. Which of your projects is adapting to anime? Can't tell you guys yet. <laughs> is the Hunter Hunter manga going to be releasing soon? Guys, Hunter Hunter, if you didn't know, the mangaka has tremendous back problems. And this is from spending years hunched over your desk drawing nonstop. There's actually a recent study that came out that said that mangaka die 20 years earlier than the average human being. And that's because of their terrible work schedule. And so I'm trying to not do that, which is why I take time off to make videos like this, to go to the gym, go outside, go to sleep. Togashi uh, has reached a place where his health has declined so poorly, it would be very hard for him to serialize and finish that project without it feeling like it was rushed. And I don't think he wants to rush it because if he wanted to just finish it off, then he would pass it on to another artist. I think he wants to continue it on his own. But again, I don't think Togashi really has the health to be able to finish it out in a way that he would fully want to. It's not like Horiyama, who did Dragon Ball, where he passed away, had a successor, is passing Dragon Ball on to another successor so that the franchise lives on. Togashi is trying to do the entire thing himself. So I don't think it's going to be releasing soon or finishing soon. How do you write efficiently? Just started, love reading web comics, but creating one isn't easy. That's right. Creating one isn't easy. I think if it was easy, everyone would do it. Writing efficiently? For me, at least, because I, I serialize and produce and write eight to 10 different series at this point, I would say efficiency comes in the way of, for me, writing multiple chapters, writing one series all at once, like batch writing. I think that's the best way I do work in general. So for example, videos, these YouTube videos, usually I will batch film multiple videos in one sitting. And that's because when I'm in a mode, I'm really good at just being focused on that one thing. I'm not thinking about anything else. I just finish it all out. And so when I'm writing, usually I'll have an outline in front of me, which I always suggest people have an outline, finish the outline. And then what I'll do is I'll just go all in on writing this one thing, this one chapter, two chapters, three chapters in one day. It's a draft. Next day, I go back and I edit that thing, make sure it's like good. And then I pass it off. Right. And so I think really focus is really important, especially if you're just starting out, then you should be probably focusing on one thing. So just focusing, making sure you show up every single day to write book time on your calendar. Just make sure that you're there. I think focus is the most important way to be efficient. How could you market your manga without reels or YouTube videos? That's a great question. Here's the thing. I always say that making content is the best way to market your stuff. Go read my projects. If you haven't link in the description, check out my Patreon link in the description. You know, making videos like this is like really a great way to help market my own work while also providing value for other people. But how can you market it without that paid ads, word of mouth, leaning on a publisher? A lot of the publishers that are the anime that you know and love are not because the creator is out here chronically online like me 
posting videos, right? It's because they focus on creating the thing and then they completely outsource the marketing to another party. I'm kind of backwards where there's not a strong manga industry here in the United States on the development side, right? Everyone loves manga, but in terms of like creation, we're still relatively new. And so I would say content creation has been a great way for me to reach this audience, capture you guys like Pokemon and help you and connect my stories with you guys. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I would always suggest taking power into your own hands as a marketer and as a creator and making videos. You can market your stuff without using IG reels or YouTube videos, but I would suggest doing that anyway. Last question. When will we get more God game? Please, <laughs> we need it. It's driving me insane. So actually, fun fact, I've written a ton of God game. I've written like multiple chapters ahead. So it's kind of up to the art studio to now execute it. So, you know, I know that the recent artist had health issues, which is why they might have to step back from the project, which is unfortunate. A lot of manga, again, have health issues, nerve damage, back health, you know, internal health. Yeah, I think right now it's a health issue. So they might be bringing on another team soon, but I have no idea. So I just approved the new chapter last night. So it should be coming soon though, really soon. Okay, so I think we're at time. This is a long video, somewhat long video, but I answered only a few of your questions. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Please leave comments in terms of what questions you would like for me to answer so I can answer questions like yours on the next week's video. And also, if you guys have any suggestions on what other types of videos I could make, like I just got an idea for that new character design video from this question. So if you guys have bigger questions that you think could make a longer video, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Peace. <laughs>